Hey, we're looking at uh, some Python programming, somewhat for beginners, even though this particular uh, problem here is going to be um, pretty much about uh, about the more complex uh, tutorial than um, than others that we have seen recently. So in this particular one here, what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, three random numbers. Okay, and then we're going to store those random numbers um, in a list. So we're going to um, we're going to be asked the question. Uh, actually, let's let's go down. Let's go down here. Maybe I'll explain it here. So we're going to uh, pick uh, three random numbers between um, one and a hundred, inclusively. And what we're going to ask the question is, what is the probability, we'll just label it as P, what's the probability, we'll call X the uh, random variable, what's the probability that their sum, okay, what's, um, actually let's do this, what is, um, we'll go ahead and spell it out, probability, what's the probability that their sum is, let's say, um, uh, between, um, I don't know, 50, so we'll call S, let's say 50 and 70, and uh, we could include 50 and 70 if you want. So what's the probability that the sum is, uh, the sum is greater than 50 and less than 70? So for example, uh, we'll say number 1 is um, equal to, so we'll randomly select a number 3. And then we'll randomly select another number, 25. This is supposed to be right. And then we'll say, right, and then we'll say 34 or something. So what's the probability that this sum is going to be between 50 and 60? Now, here's something that's going to be important here. So the sum, right, ints of 1 plus ints of 2 plus ints of 3 now let's say for example let's actually come up with something here for example 40 so we could have uh, 20 plus so let's say this was the first random number 20 and then let's say um, 19 and then let's say the second number or the third number is a 1 right so this would actually this is not this is going to be 40 isn't it um, what number we want to get here? 50, 60, let's say 60. Okay, so let's say this is 30, and this is 29, and then of course that would be 60. So this right here would be, we would count this one because it is actually between 50 and 70, right? 60 is. But here's the deal. The deal is, okay, so this is the first number, second number, third number, but also you could have 29 be the first number and 30 be the second number and let's say that the third number is uh, is a 1 right here okay so this sums actually to 60 also okay this sums to 60 also so we're not going to consider this to be a permutation in other words where order matters we're just going to say you know what's the probability that the sum is 60 so in other words this sequence here is actually equal to this uh, is actually equal to this sequence okay so we got to take that uh, into uh, into an account and what we're going to do is, is we're going to um, construct a list but inside the list we're going to um, Let's actually do this in numerical order. 1, uh, 29, and 30. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take, of course, we're not going to sort it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take this. <coughs> Maybe that's what I should do. Go ahead and write it the way we've got it written there. So 30, 29, and Okay, so this is how the algorithm is going to actually work, and I believe on this very first one there's going to be an empty list right here, okay, because I'm declaring this list to be actually consisting of, um, consisting of list, right, 
and then this would be another list here. Okay, so what's going to happen is, let's say that this happens to be the first sequence of numbers. All right, then what? Then what it's going to do is, um, let's see, dot dot dot. In other words, there's going to be this thing will consist of a bunch of lists. What it's going to do is take the sequence of numbers, all right, and then it's going to look at the list. Well, if this list here doesn't contain, right, if it doesn't contain um, this particular uh, this particular one, which if we start with just the empty list, okay, let's do this. So this is actually what we're going to be uh, starting with, and I think I call it A, but I can't remember. Right, we start with this. And so what's going to do, what's going to happen here, it's going to look at this, it's going to take this, put it into a list, and then it's going to go here and it's going to say, okay, is this sequence in this list? And obviously the answer is no. So it's going to uh, loop through the list, this list A here, it's going to loop through the list. I should probably put a space in here so you can see what's going on. It's hard to see that one. And so as you can see, it'll loop through A and, and this sequence is not in A. And then what it's going to do is it will then append that list it will then append that list so this will actually be put into a list and I think we call it um, list B I believe so I believe this is B here but don't hold me to it right so it's gonna take B and it's gonna go hey and it's gonna loop through A is this in A right here is this in A? And then, of course, it's going to say, no, it's not in A. And so then what it'll do, it'll go ahead and append it to A. See that append it means it'll, it'll insert it in A, right? And then what will happen is we'll go back and generate three more numbers, and it'll look at the if statement. Well, then, is it actually, does it meet this criteria? and if it actually does meet this criteria then what it will do it will go back now it will look at this it will look at the new a so this is the new a right it will look at the new a and say okay and it'll loop through is it equal to is it is it equal to this one right and if it's not equal to that one okay it will first actually look at this one is it equal to that no is it equal to this one no, right? And and so this happens to actually be the last one. Well, if it's not, then what it will do is it will go back and it will append and it will be uh, put into A, right? We'll insert another one that sums to uh, whatever the numbers are. Now, here's the deal. Um, and of course, if it is equal to this, then the program will break. And then it will go back and generate three more randomly selected numbers and see if it meets uh, this criteria here. All right. Well, anyway, let's just go and uh, take a look at. I uh, say take a look. Let's go ahead and type all this stuff in now. All right. So this is a little bit more complicated than uh, than some previous ones, but we're not using anything new that I can see. We're not using any new methods. Um, all right, so we're generating some random numbers, which means we'll we'll need to uh, import the random module, All right? And we're going to be doing some counting. We'll talk about these variables here coming up. All right, and C O. I'm trying to remember what that stands for. I can't. Can't outcome. It might be the outcome. Okay, so like I said, we'll generate the master, create the, uh, um, or we're going to be storing everything, and then we'll create another list where we're going to store, <coughs> to 
temporarily. The numbers, the three numbers that are randomly generated. But we got to have a loop, right? So we got to have a loop, and while so this will be the number of trials here. Um, and I don't know, we'll start with a thousand, I guess. Right. So we're going to generate the first number random integer, and we're going to pick a number between 1 and 100, so that'll be the first number. And then we'll generate another number, uh, rand ant. I think I forgot the D on that last one. Right. And let's go up here. Random integer. And then ints of 3 is equal to random. We'll generate. All right, so that's the third one to be generated. Okay. And now we're going to sum these up. So we'll sum them up. We'll, we'll, we'll put a parentheses here around all this stuff. So the first integer plus the second integer plus the third integer. All right, that'll give us our sum. And now what we'll do is an if statement. So if the sum is greater than, we could say greater than or equal to 50, whatever you want to do. Here, we'll say that. If the sum is, if the sum is greater than or equal to 50 and S is less than or equal to, let's say, 70, we'll say 70, right? Okay, so if we were looking this math at mathematically, in other words, if the sum is in this interval right here, right? So mathematically, this is how you'd write it with the brackets, meaning we include 50 um, and we include 70. So somewhere in this interval right here. Okay, that's the criteria we're looking for. All right, just hit enter. You know, it takes a little while to get get used to white space using Python. Right, so we just hit enter there. Okay, so if this happens, let's count that. We'll keep track of that. Right, we want to know how many times is this going to uh, is this going to uh, going to occur. Now, let's create the uh, the list. So we'll say ints of one ints of two and ints of three ints of one ints of two ints of three okay and we'll put that um, into a temporary temporary list all right um let's see we're setting this equal to zero Trying to remember why. Figure it out here in a minute. Now remember, we'll have to loop through. We're going to loop through that master list. We're going to loop through if x is equal to b. If x is equal to b. Whoops. We're going to want to break. Alright, so we're going to be comparing this list right here with everything that we have in A. Yeah. I said that order didn't matter, but um, hmm. okay, so we'll want to keep up with that. Right. Basically, we're going to keep up with how many elements actually are in A. That's what's going on here as we go through and loop through that. Right. Um, let's see. Okay. 
once we have done that um, if C of A is equal to the length now I don't know if we've used this or not but this is a nice little handy thing here this length function All right. Um, in other words, if we've gotten all the way to the end of A, we've counted every element in A. And if, okay, if this is true, we've, we've counted, in other words, we've went all the way to A, if it's equal to the length of A. So in other words, let's say that we only got to uh, half of A, and then we had to break, and there was a bunch of other, a bunch of other list that was in A. But basically what that means is, let's say we got to the third one, and that means that the program actually broke. In other words, the for statement here, the for loop, broke, and so it didn't count all of the elements. And so C of A would uh, be basically, uh, let's say, 3 or something. And so in other words, C of A wouldn't actually be equal to the length of A. So this is really, did we loop through all of them? I think that's, and if we loop through all of them, right, and x was never equal to b, so what exactly does that mean? Well, what that means is that b was not equal to any of the ones that were actually in a. And if that happens, then what we'll want to do is, is append. In other words, we're going to insert now b actually into, uh, into a. Okay, so it actually looks like uh, when I did this that I was thinking that the order doesn't matter, but it turns out um, that the order, actually the order doesn't matter, or no, the order does matter. In other words, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 1, right, are, are definitely not equal. All right, and... Uh, so I'm sitting here thinking here. Okay. Um, so we do that. And uh, so if this is not true, then we want to keep up with this. We want to count. So this is our typical counting variable here. Um, right. So every time that is not true, or it doesn't matter, I guess, whether this is true or not, every time we loop through this, we want to count. So that's going to be part of our while statement. In other words, we want to keep up with um, want to keep up with this, right? So when this actually is, you know, we could say this. Why don't we just say that? It doesn't matter. It's equal to a thousand. So we're going to run this a thousand times. All right. And then Okay, so let's go ahead and now print out. What do we want to print out? Um, let's see. There are there are blank. Uh, okay, C O. Okay, so this right here is going to tell us um, how many times this was actually true. All right, how many times did that actually happen? In other words, when s was greater than or equal to 50 and s was less than or equal to 50, that's what this is. That's just, that's what this is doing right here. Okay. And then we'll print out. We could actually do this all in one print statement, but we're gonna do this separately. So the probability of the sum. Um, of the sum being, uh, let's see, <clears throat> why don't we just do this, um, we'll write it mathematically here, actually I think we did an equal sign, didn't we, okay, it's equal to 70, so the probability that the sum was greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 70 is, And what we'll do now is, is we'll go ahead and take the length of A. So this would be all of the sums, remember we stored in A, 
the length of a and you know we've got that very empty one at the very beginning we should probably subtract that off now that I think about it but because we're counting up all of a and we should really subtract one off from here because Yeah. Okay, we'll just leave it like that. Um, hmm. Let's see. The length of A. I don't know. Let's run this. Let's see what we got. Ooh. There are 39. So this occurred 39 times. Move this into view here. Probably okay. Sum is greater than or equal to fifty and less than or equal to seventy, and that probability was point zero three nine that this occurred. Now I should say something here, which in other words, let's say we got the numbers. Um well, let's see, once again, we got the numbers thirty. 1 and 29. Right? So it turns out that according to our particular script here, 1, 30, and 29, these okay, these both meet the same criteria, however they're going they're being counted. In other words, this is being inserted uh, into the list and then this is being inserted into the list also. Okay, these two lists are not equal uh, to each other. Order actually uh, matters here. Now what we could actually do in this script is we could sort the list, we could sort it, and then insert it into it. Yeah, we could actually do that if we wanted to. Maybe I'll let you work on that. All right, okay. Um, let's run the script again. Let's actually, let's see here. We'll run it that many times. That many trials. So I suspect this number will be a lot bigger, right? Obviously. But look at here. This, this number here is going to eventually converge. To something we got 0 .03996, 0 .03569. Let's let's uh, let's actually add another zero. Of course, this program will take longer to run. Let's see what we got here. And if you wanted to, you know, you could print off what does the set A look like. I would imagine it's pretty damn big. Well, wait a minute. There are only 3,742 in this last one. That's how many entries there are into it. Hmm. I think we are. Once we do this, I think we are going to print off A, but we'll will drop the number of trials down considerably. This one here, there was only 39 elements. Well, hopefully this comes up sometime. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So like I said, in this particular one, order actually does matter. Well, we could actually, we could write this script simply where um, order doesn't matter by using the sort method for the, 
for list. Wow. We should be getting something anytime soon here. Uh, you know, you got to ask the question, what could this possibly be used for? Who knows, maybe you're trying to guess uh, what's the probability that somebody spends between 50 and $70, you know. <clears throat> okay, finally. Ooh, 0 0.02. Wow. Well, anyway, it's somewhere close in that area, isn't it? Let's go through here and let's reduce... Just a couple of those, and then down here, I'm kind of curious. Let's actually print. Let's print out A. Let's take a look at what A actually looks like here. Let's see what we got. E. That's kind of crazy looking. How many of them are there? 399. So, you can see, now you see there's an extra one here. That's the reason we calculated the probability. I don't think it's going to make much difference. But we should probably, because this is the, um, all the possibilities, um, we should probably, um, so we should probably subtract this empty spot out, off here. But there's a 10, 4, and a 55. And my guess is somewhere in this list, there is, uh, I'm sure, there's some, a 10 4, and we'll never find it. But um, there are ones that are repeating in here. There's got to be ones that are repeating. Who's going to sit here and find that? Yeah. Um, yeah. But this sum right here should sum to. Uh, should sum to a number that's between 50, what did we say, 50 and 70? Let's take a look at this one here. For example, 48, 49. This is 55, right? 55, um, 24, and 34 is 58, right? And so on. Okay, you get the idea. You have gotten the idea, all right? Um, Okay, so we're over here doing some Python programming. Hopefully, you're getting uh, some good ideas on some on some uh, scripts that you'd like to write up, and getting some kind of a background on what's going on here to get you started. All right, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. I can't remember exactly. Oh, we're going to be doing the random walk. The random walk. It's a cool problem. All right. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.